I'd like to have a win of the first year, if possible. A winning season for a team that had not had one in 14 years. A difficult goal. How would Vince Lombardi do it? It started with Sonny Jerkins reporting in the best condition of his career for Lombardi. It started with Sam Huff coming out of retirement for Lombardi. It started in the fire and haze, sweat and sacrifice of summer, where 40 men learned to be tough mentally and physically, to have a singleness of purpose, a desire for excellence. They were taught the basic approach to football by a different kind of coach, a coach who did not want to make more of his players, but who wanted them to make more of themselves. It wasn't easy, and the results weren't guaranteed. Only the coming season held the answers. And at the end of summer, as the Redskins prepared for their first game in New Orleans, they could be sure of only one thing. There were no quitters left. In New Orleans, the Saints fans had a message, and the Redskins defense went to work on it. took over, Summer's well-learned lessons took wing. Sonny Jerkins zeroed in on the all-pro tight end Jerry Smith for one touchdown. Then teaming with number 42, Charlie Taylor, he floated and bombed the Saints right out of the game. Summer's sacrifices became a receding memory, forgotten in the ecstasy of victory, sweet victory. Nevertheless, the first win was the sweat of summer. Next to Cleveland, Washington led late in the game. But the Browns slipped in under the wire and the Redskins record stood at one and one. In San Francisco the following week, everything seemed ragged. Only great recovery efforts kept the Redskins in the game. But the 49ers led late in the last quarter. And a ragged score was better than none as Washington settled for a last minute tie. In the fourth week of the season, the Redskins finally came home. Thus far, it had looked like any other of the past 14 years. But filled with hope, the Washington fans came to see if this team, with this coach, was really any better. As far as St. Louis was concerned, the answer was quite plainly yes. First, number 37, Pat Fisher, intercepted to set up a score by Larry Brown. Next, Sam Huff pulled one down. In a sideline conference, coach and quarterback set the play. And Jerry Smith made it look easy. The cards had to throw to catch up. But when they put the ball in the air, the Washington secondary tracked it down. It was Mike Bass on this one, which led to Charlie Taylor's score. Kurt Knight added four field goals, and St. Louis was desperate. 
but Pat Fisher again came up with the ball. And the cards came up bloody, bowed, and beaten. The second win was for the defensive secondary. The Steelers found it hard to stop Sonny Jerkinson, who passed for one touchdown and weaved his way to a second. That was all the Redskins needed. Because the defense, led by its hitters and crushers, gave up only seven points. Like hounds after a fox, they ran Steeler quarterback Terry Hanratty into the ground. The fourth win was for the hitters. Under their new coach, the Redskins had become a team that punished. Throughout the season, they were hitters who displayed one necessary quality. They played with abandon. Dean of the hitters, middle linebacker Sam Huff personified the Lombardi credo. When his wrecking ball style caught up with him, it wasn't for long because Big Sam came back to play with little hurts. Linebacker Chris Hanberger has a unique style of punish. In the NFL, he is known respectfully as the hangman. And many opponents came to learn the black and blue ballad of Big Sam and the Hangman. When number 86, Marlon McKeever, became a starting linebacker, there was no loss of speed or ferocity. What the hitters didn't get to handle had already been doomed to the front line. The Crushers, Musgrove and Bosch, Carroll, Camera and Hoffman, Crane and Norton. But even this power was sometimes harnessed by frustration. In rainy Baltimore, the Colts rolled over the Redskins with seeming ease. When the Rams came to town, their defense mauled the Washington attack. Dallas came with Rookie of the Year Calvin Hill, who proved his worth, and the Cowboys went home victorious. When the two teams met in Dallas, the contest was closer, but the result was the same, frustration and defeat. For the Redskins, the season's peak of frustration came at home on Flag Day. Inspired by Sam Huff's touchdown and Charlie Haraway's score, Washington led Philadelphia late in the last quarter, 28-14. The Eagles charged back. And with time almost gone, they went to the desperation bomb, which became the most controversial call of the Redskin season. The truly disappointing last minute tie did not sit well with many people. When the Falcons visited the capital, they brought a potent ground game. However, the real ground power belonged to the Redskins. Number 43, Larry Brown, ran wild behind the blocking of Promuto, 
Rock and Hawes gaining 102 yards and scoring a touchdown. When he found himself in trouble, Jurgensen went to number 31, Charlie Haraway. And behind blocks by Snowden and Schenke, Charlie streaked 64 yards for the winning touchdown. The fifth win was for the blockers and runners. Throughout the season, Charlie Haraway rammed and turned his way goalward. In addition to his running, he was also the sixth leading pass receiver in the NFL. Larry Brown from Kansas State had some problems in the beginning. But once the first year man hit his stride, he rushed for 888 yards, the most ever by a Redskin rookie. He pushed Calvin Hill for Rookie of the Year on it and ended up fourth in the league in rushing. After much concern, the fans were happy to find that the Redskins' running game was alive and devastating. In the return match with the Eagles, Sonny was on his game, and revenge was in the air. But so was Sleet, and the AstroTurf became the Astro Rink. On the slick surface, Washington's fire sputtered and went out. With the departure of number nine, and with the increasingly bad weather conditions, the eagle attack struck what should have been the death blow. But the Redskins had learned to fight adversity, to play with small hurts. Sonny returned to the game. The offense crashed for one touchdown. The defense crunched for another. The golden arm fired, and Jerry Smith came up with a miracle. Revenge, sweet revenge, and time ran out on the Eagles' argument. The sixth win was for the passer and his receiver. The nerve center of any team is the quarterback, and on the field extension of the coach. In Sonny Jurgensen, Vince Lombardi has what he calls the best quarterback he's ever seen. No one argues. Sonny's style of scrambling defies imitation. What he does best is throw that seed. Throw that seed well enough to lead the league in passing as the only quarterback to throw for over 3,000 yards. A 
passer needs good receivers. And Jerry Smith was a touchdown machine. In three of the last four years, he's been the leading tight end receiver in the NFL. Wide receiver Bob Long could go long, but his real value was in the short zones, where he took the punishment and got the yards. Wide receiver Charlie Taylor always smiling because he knows you're not going to get him he'll get you style frenetic a cross between pinwheel and whirlwind Frustrating to most opponents. But Charlie just keeps smiling and whirling. The only way to beat him is to cheat him. But if you cheat the NFL's second leading pass receiver, then you'll watch him going away. And as he leaves, he'll turn to give you a farewell smile. Washington's last home game of the year was against the Saints. If they could win this one, they could show their fans a winner for the first time in 14 years. In the first half, the secondary smothered the Saints' air attack. Knight kicked and the Redskins were ahead. <laughs> Two scores by Charlie Haraway made it 17 to nothing at the half. And the fans sensed a new day dawning in Washington. But in the second half, the Saints changed their plan of attack. They went to the ground, and they went to the end zone. The game was slipping away, and with it, the Redskins' hopes for a winning season. But as their coach has said, if a man is running down the street with everything you own, you better stop him. 
And the Redskins defense did just that. They made their own break. And after 14 lean years, they came up a winner. The seventh win was for a man and a team. As Vince Lombardi left the field, the season must have echoed in his mind. I'd like to have a winner the first year, if possible. A winner the first year, if possible. They had won. They had won, and in every way possible. They had won with guts and sincerity. They had won with grace and style. They had won with courage and singleness of purpose. In the end, Vince Lombardi did not make more of these men, but he did make them make more of themselves. Next year, there'll be more victories and perhaps a title. Because for this man and for this team, all things are possible. <laughs>